Hello, my friends, and welcome to a fantastic lesson all about boiling water. I know, that sounds sort of weird, right? But what if you wanted to make tea? And that's something we have to do often, right? Well, before I get too off track, let me tell you a little bit more about tea and the history of tea. And the history of tea starts in China almost 5,000 years ago. According to the legends, in the year 2732 BC, Emperor Shen Nung was boiling a pot of water when several leaves from a wild tree blew into his pot. He noticed a pleasant aroma resulting from the combination and tried drinking some. Supposedly, he felt a warm feeling as if the liquid was exploring all of his body. He named the brew Cha, which in Chinese means to check or investigate. Later on in Chinese history, another emperor ruled that tea would get its own symbol, also pronounced Cha, which symbolizes the way that tea brought balance to humankind with nature. Well. Tea became pretty popular in China after that for medicinal properties, pleasure, and refreshment. It also spread to the rest of the world. The United States had its own contribution to the steeping of this fantastic beverage. During the 18th century, a still-developing United States was taxed heavily on tea by the British, which led to the infamous Boston Tea Party. A band of rebels poured barrels of tea into the Boston Harbor. Hmm. Well, the United States has other history, too, to share with tea. In 1904, the World Trade Fair was hosted in St. Louis, and a feature of this exposition was a tea pavilion, where hot, steaming tea could be served. However, the hot summer weather did not vibe well with this offering, and the man supervising the pavilion added ice to the tea. On a hot day, that became quite a refreshing treat, and people lined up for this new invention, iced tea. So refreshing on a summer day. Four years later, a tea merchant in New York City started sending samples of his teas to restaurants and cafes throughout New York City. He packaged them in silk bags to make them look really nice. However, to save on time, many of his customers started just steeping the tea directly in the bags, which accidentally led to the creating of the tea bag. How cool, right? Well, making the perfect cup of tea can be really hard. Different teas like different temperatures to release that optimal flavor. And a thermometer can be really handy for that. Or even a modern kettle which has a built-in thermostat. But what do you do if you don't have one of those? Well, long ago the Chinese also discovered a method of boiling to solve this. Let's head to the kitchen for an experiment. Hey friends, welcome back to the kitchen. We're here for that water boiling experiment. And you know, you can turn this into a, a making tea experience too. I'm gonna go over the five stages of water boiling that the Chinese discovered, and it's all about eyes. So keep those open and take a look at what we're about to do. Let me show you what supplies I'm gonna be using. And granted, you may not have these supplies at home, but that's okay. Once you learn this method, you'll be able to boil water anywhere while camping at a friend's house uh, the possibilities are unlimited let's take a look i have water in a saucepan because um i want to make sure that you can really see those bubbles and look you can even see me i also have a timer set a bit away from where the heat's going to be coming out because i want to show you about how much time this might take too as well as a thermometer to measure the temperature. I also brought a notebook and I have copied the five stages names right here on this page. Shrimp eyes, crab eyes, fish eyes, 
And then we're done with the eyes because rope of pearls and raging torrent. According to the Chinese, those are the five stages. And why eyes, you might say? Well, many of these creatures' eyes happen to be about the same size as the bubbles that are going to be coming out. So we're going to look for those. And if you're not familiar with those size of eyes, well, um, maybe change your diet. Aha. Oh, look, I also have a cup with a tea bag ready to go. And here's the package that the tea bag came in. And actually, not every tea bag or box is going to have these instructions here, but this one has a temperature we're looking for. It's pretty fantastic. Let's get this water boiling. And something I'm going to do is as soon as I turn this on, I'm also going to run this timer. In my notebook, I'm going to take down the amount of time it takes, and I'm also going to write down the temperature I'm getting when I'm seeing that. All right, here we go. Now, you really want to use a pot like this or a saucepan like this with a clear top. And I know we can see me right now, but what we really want to be able to look for is those bubbles that are going to be happening in that water and the size those bubbles are going to take. I'm going to lift this top off as soon as it gets boiling to make it a bit easier to see them, but having that top on there is going to help things get cooking. All right, we're going to check back in just a moment when this gets boiling. We are almost three minutes since we started boiling this water and I think we're just about at our first stage. Take a look in the pot and what do you see on the bottom? All those tiny bubbles. Do you think those are about the size of an eye of a shrimp? That'd be a lot of shrimps without eyes, right? All of those. Well, the Chinese say that at the shrimp eye stage, which I think we're just about at, the water should be about 160 degrees Fahrenheit and would be perfect for a delicate green tea like Sencha. So let's take the water's temperature and see where we are. Look at it shooting right up there. We're looking for about 160. And look at the size of those bubbles and getting bigger towards the center. We're at three minutes and 40 seconds already. Maybe we weren't quite at temperature, but we're getting closer there. And we've got some bigger bubbles in the center, but look at the general size of most of these bubbles. We are definitely getting towards 160. I don't have Sencha today though. I've got a chai and that requires our last stage. All right, so you can see we've got some bigger bubbles in the center, but out towards the sides, generally we've got the shrimp eyes and we're just at about 160 degrees, and that's about four minutes and a half that it took us to get there. The next stage we're gonna be hitting is called crab eyes, and I think we can already see some of those crab eyes right in there. When we see crab eyes, the water's going to be heading towards 175 degrees Fahrenheit, which is great for green and oolong and even white teas. And look at that, we're climbing right over the 160 and heading on towards 175. And I can see our bubbles are starting to get quite big. And it's starting to happen a lot faster too, which tells me we might be at our next stage almost. This is heating up quickly. We are now at over five minutes and I'm seeing what look like, and they actually look like them, Fish eyes. Yeah, I know, really creepy, right? Fish eyes. When we see fish eyes, we should be hitting about 180 degrees, which is perfect, perfect for some uh, maybe heartier green teas, oolong teas. And if you look at our, our thermometer, we're just at about 180. Pretty cool. And now we're starting to see these fish eyes sort of pop and form these sort of strings especially on the side there, do you see that? That amazing looking thing, they called that the rope of pearls. Look at those ropes of pearls starting to ride. And um, that would be about 200 degrees Fahrenheit and perfect for black teas, yes. 
Look at those ropes of pearls. And here we are, we're actually just about hitting over 190 degrees Fahrenheit, so we're definitely about there. And we're at about six minutes. The last stage of water boiling should give us quite a bubble. They called it the raging torrent. And at that point, the water is very, very, very hot and boiling very steadily. It's great for herbal teas and red teas, and it should be reaching about 212 degrees. I think we're just starting to transition from rope of pearls into raging torrent. And if you look at our thermometer, you can see we're hitting 200 degrees. Let's give it just another moment. We should be there. Fantastic. And look at that as the ropes sort of disappear, it becomes a swirling, swirling, powerful torrent, just like the ocean during a very crazy storm. Awesome. All right. And our, uh, our, our water is actually ready. They say if you go for too long, you may start to deoxygenate the water. So why don't we turn this off just at about seven minutes that it took to get to this state making sure my stove is off and i'm going to tell anybody around here but we're sort of alone here that there's hot water and a hot surface and now very carefully very very ever so carefully i am now going to pour this hot water to this cup and have a delicious cup of tea now did you remember to write down all the times and temperatures that you saw as we got here is pretty exciting and you know another thing you can do with that data is to graph it to line graph it and show those points when we reached each of the stages and many maybe maybe you could even draw what those little eyes and other things look like well enjoy your tea and i'll see you again soon friends